call everybody back to the Pitt County Board of Commissioners budget workshop if we could go ahead and call the roll and mr. chairman um, Commissioner Floyd Huggins indicated to me that she will be running late okay thank you we've called the meeting to order um, dr. Lanker Good morning, Chairman Fitzpatrick, Commissioners, uh, Ms. Gallagher. It's good to be here this morning. Um, I'll walk you through our, our budget presentation. A lot of this is you know, the same format that you have seen over the last eight or nine years. Um, so we'll go through this. Again, just want to first of all just say thanks uh, for all the support we've had over the last, um, at least in my span, almost nine years here in Pitt County. So I certainly appreciate that. I know the team does as well. As typical, we kind of break this down into a quick budget overview, um, fixed costs for salaries. Uh, that's, and we actually added a new line this this year, which I'm sure will excite you. Um, fixed facilities cost increases just because of what we've seen in in all of our our, our worlds in the last uh, year or two, with, uh, with the, and then that new money request, and then just the capital appropriations that we work on every year. So just going with our budget overview. Um, slide that we, we've shared that where we are in comparison to uh, the rest of the state you can see Pitt County is, is the, the green where we are just just slightly below the state average we've closed that gap last year uh, in the last year some our average daily membership we've had some fluctuations in that obviously in the last two years um, you can see if you go way back, we'll start back at 15, 16. That's when they changed the uh, the age for kindergarten. You've heard me say that before. We had a charter school open in 16, uh, 17. Uh, you can see we've come back from those. And then in uh, uh, the 1920 or the 2021 school year, we did have a drop. That was the, the obviously the beginning of COVID for us. Uh, just like a lot of school districts, we lost anywhere from uh, four to five percent of the students. Um, you can see now we're coming back. Our, our uh, projected enrollment for next year is, is above uh, 23,600 uh, going into next year. So we're kind of back where we were pre COVID. Just, I know it's uh, always been an interest for the commissioners on how our charter school funding looks. You can see we did peak in 18, 19. Since then, that number has, has decreased every year over the last uh, about four years. Just to look at those charter schools quickly, you can see where most of these the charter school kids are going. Would we'll just take a second and point out that the bottom two we separate those because that's actually partnerships with us. So even though that looks like 140 charter school kids, you know I, I sit on the board of both of those entities. You know, and the kids in the ECU Community School will come back to us in sixth grade, and the students going to Nursba are our kids through eighth grade. So we, we obviously want them to succeed. So we we're actually. Although we list them as charter schools, they're really, we look at them as part of Big County. Just kind of a, a breakdown. This is actually what our proposed operating budget is for next year. You can see a breakdown of, it'd be about a total of $49 million, a little over $49 million. County appropriations would be about $47 million. Rent agreement fines and forfeitures, uh, the red light traffic violations, um, other revenues add up to a little bit over 49, uh, 49.7 million. How that breaks down is you can you can see there that uh, uh, the classroom uh, teachers is 3.5 million. Your non-instructional support, which is our clerical staff, down. I won't read them all to you. Facilities operations 13 million. That's that's the biggest um, 
single entity in there, and then of course the, the teacher supplements, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well, is the second largest line item in our local budget. Keep moving. Just, all right. Um, uh, putting that all together, you can see as we break down our local budget, it's still about uh, instructional programs is about 55 percent, uh, and then s support services is about 44 percent of the local budget. All right, now moving into um, just the, just the increases or the, the ask, I guess. Uh, fixed cost salary increases, 1.4, and this is all three of them together. I'll break all these down for you in just a moment. Fixed cost salary increases a little over 1.46 million. Fixed facilities cost increases, uh, 1.9, and then new money requests, 700,000, and that's teacher supplements, so we'll talk about that as well. Last year when we started our budget, and you, when you paid attention to the General Assembly, you know, the General Assembly put in a, last year's a $13 an hour minimum wage for employees. This year it's $15 an hour. And if you look at uh, the second line there, uh, that, that's going to cost about $513,000 uh, moving forward with that uh, $15 an hour uh, supplement. You can see that just a regular 2.5 increase for uh, certified salaries. Another one to note is maybe the employee re retirement rate. If you notice that number is now over 24 percent, where that number is in increasing uh, over the last several years by, by multiple percentage points. So that number is going up a lot. Um, health benefits there has gone up another $338 per person, totaling over $111,000 to the local budget. The fixed facilities cost increases, this is the one we uh, mentioned is kind of a, a newer line item. It's because everything's gone up. You know, we used to just build this within our budget and we're able to kind of keep it going and just had to decide some years to do this or some years do that. This year you can see just the, the, just the cost increases of everything has is, is gone up almost $1.9 million. It broke it down for you. Uh, just a couple of things, just general construction repair, low voltage has gone up like almost 264 65%. Uh, fire prevention, janitorial supplies, uh, roads, grounds, you know, uh, roofs. I know we've talked a lot about roofs in the last couple of years, and we're still going to be talking about roofs probably, but we're getting, we're getting, getting there. Um, so that number is adding up to about 1.9 million additional costs. And then the only really um, new money request. Uh, that's not really been pushed down to us either by the economy or the state is just uh, the, the teacher supplement that we've we've talked about you know we've we came to the county commissioners years ago and said our goal we shared that our goal was to, to get upwards of, of 10 percent um, we've moved from when i got here we we're at five and a quarter and we had a different plan for new teachers and we got all them on board to about five and a quarter percent we got everybody to six last year we got to six and a half now we're asking to go to seven that's that uh, seven hundred thousand dollars will take our teacher supplements to uh, seven percent. So that brings us that total there that you saw earlier of four four million dollars total request for all three of those line items for a grand total of forty seven uh, just a little over forty seven million dollars. Just to show uh, when you look at uh, the last uh, five or six years, you can see that. Um, and you can see the years there, like 2016, 17, 19, 20, uh, 21, 22, where we're, we were increased more than the, the base requirement. We were able to help our teachers and move those numbers forward. That's really what that's showing. Then capital appropriations for, um, for several years. This was $750,000 about five years ago. Uh, the, the commissioners, thank you very much, raised that to a million dollars. A year just for, for just for straight capital appropriations uh, for things you see there uh, moving on to article 40 and 42 you can see last year's request was a, a, a lot that was 13 about the 13 some million dollars that was really uh, because we came back and had to talk about CMFs when the commissioners gave us that three million dollars to keep that project moving uh, we certainly appreciate that special projects you're talking about um, cameras bus cameras inside cameras um, additional roof, 4.7, 4.8 million was additional roofs. I remember a lot of that was put in the lobs, which we didn't fund, so we funded it back through the Article 4042 funding. 
Um, this year that request is down to pretty much a normal request of about 1.5 million for Article 4042. A couple other areas that, uh, just to keep you abreast of where we are, our, this is our local fund balance. You can see the blue line has continued to go up some. We'll talk about that in a second. The, and that's the line items that actually, the money is actually geared or earmarked for something. It's going to be spent on something specific. The green line is the honest, honest sign fund balance. You can see that's actually come down the last year. Um, if I go to the next slide, we'll talk about the, just the, the fund balance as a whole. These are some items that are in the fund balance. A lot of that is the CMF's money because of the windows and things. The project is not done yet. And again, this fund balance is going back to last June 30th or 31st, um, uh, 30th. Um, so over the course of this year, that, a lot of that money has been spent. Uh, the A.G. Cox Media Center, we've bought the books for that center, so that $200,000 is has now been taken out. A lot of the, the, the instructional staff development money has been spent. Um, so that there's $5.8 million that's actually in the process going to be spent, except for, of course, the red light camera money. That money is just, well, it's just there for now. <laughs> we'll see where that ends up, okay? Um, so, again, that number keeps going up. So in one line, you're going to see the fund balance always going up until we figure out uh, where we can and how we can use that money and when we can use that money, okay? Um, just a couple other quick uh, slides. Just um, our locally paid positions. This is a slide we did start to include in here a couple years ago. You can see where we are. There are uh, uh, administrators, just the total, the, the in total locally paid positions. You can see those have come down over the last five years by about uh, a little over 20 uh, positions. And I just highlight the, the fact that the teachers line that's gone from 51 to 40. That's really because the state has refunded, has <coughs> reallocated the way they fund some teachers and we'd be able to move a lot of those into state positions because they've given us some specific positions for uh, encore teachers, your, your band and your, your orchestra, your PE positions. So we were able to move some local positions back into state over the last several years. Um, SROs, we, we started really focusing on this a couple years ago when we got some grants, but you can see that um, we do get a state grant for uh, $400,000 every year. We use some federal funds that have, it's a, it's a two to one match. So we do have some federal funds to match it. And we'll say that the state grant funds basically $40,000 for an SRO. If you know where you can find one for $40,000, please let me know. Um, but, um, uh, and again, the SROs we have are great, you know, but and they're certainly worth more than $40,000. So we, we certainly uh, fund that and take that seriously. Lastly, just appreciate what you do and then take some questions if I can follow up on a few things for you. I have one. Mary? Um, your uh, non-certified staff such as cafeteria mm -hmm. and, and that kind of work, what was it in this budget? I just want to know. And did they get a raise? Yes, ma'am. The good... Um, Bus drivers too, that, that crowd. Here on, on this slide, you can see that uh, this is the second line. Uh, classified employees either got 2.5% or a $15 hour minimum increase, depending on which was the highest, because they had to get the $15 minimum. Now, what we have done is also, if, if you know anything about the public school budget, there were years it was flat and there were no raises given. So we had a, we had a, a basically a run through there through the last of about 15 years where if you came in as a first year employee or a 10th year employee, you're paid the same. We've actually gone back and fixed that. We've taken that whole compression and, and thanks to my, my uh, finance officer, Ms. Deborah Baggett here, um, she was able to fix that where we actually have some steps built back in. Okay, so some people, if I, Ms. Ms. Baggett are getting, uh, some employees may get upwards of about 15%. Uh, some of our employees may get upwards of 15 to meet that minimum threshold. So we, they are at 15. Yes, they will be starting June or J uh, July 1st. Yes, ma'am. That's all I want to know. And if, Mr. Chairman, if I could add to that as well, while you've got this slide up, um, to, to kind of tie it into what we talked about on my presentation Monday night, that $1.4 million request for all of that funding those are included fully within your recommended budget. That 704000 in new money for the new teacher supplement 
is covered fully in your recommended budget. Oh, okay. um, the 1.9 million in the repairs and those additional costs is where I shaved it down so that we could make the total overall budget a 6% increase year over year. So your question is it's included in the, he answered your question that yes, it's included <coughs> within their requested budget and I wanted a supplement to say yes, it's included within the recommended budget as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any other questions or comments? If Thank I could you. also then just finish up, I think everyone knows uh, Aaron Erickson. He's our facilities director and our assistant superintendent uh, for facilities and operations, Matt Johnson. And of course, Good morning. Thank course, you for being here. Introduced uh, yeah. Deborah Baggett, our finance officer. Thank it, you for your presentation. Right. Thank you. Thank it you. has been a pleasure working um, with their team, and so thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we're moving on. What are you rest of you folks? Do you want to um, go ahead and do your the report? Yes. Well, well. Thank you, everybody. Let me just go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so if I may, um, at this point, since we're ahead of schedule for Dr. Rouse's presentation, we'll go back to the follow-up items from yesterday. I have three things that I wanted to follow up with you all on, um, semi-related to yesterday's, and take this opportunity while we're together as a board. Um, yesterday, as a follow-up item, Commissioner Nunnally talked about, um, in our comments, the convenience site contracts. So we did some research on that, and I just wanted to bring back what we found. Um, we have two contracts for our convenience sites, um, the 14 different sites, with two different providers. One is with Trust Denim, and the other is with a company called uh, Management Support and Development Incorporated. Both contracts expire um, June 30th of this year. Our intent is to, um, in our normal course, to bid those out. And we did increase the line item for those contracted services in your recommended budget the first time we prepared it, anticipating that there would be increased costs as a result of labor and other expenses in that item. So we included a 3% increase in your proposed fiscal year 22-23 budget. Um, and we can address and, and stress the importance of the concerns you've raised, Commissioner Nunnally as we negotiate those contracts and work those through. Um, and so it is, um, I would, um, although I don't have anything official to report, I would not assume that the existing contractors are willing to continue on for next year. And so we're exploring other options in that area um, and believe that we can accomplish your intent in next year's budget and have already increased that amount. A question about that. Uh, it, it, the, those convenience sites, they are, they are not, uh, operated by ECVC though, that, that's, that's privately. They are not operated by ECVC right now. So they are operated by a company called Trust Denim, and I know you recall Jeff Savage used to be on this board. He is associated with that company. He has a number of the sites. And then there's a second private company, Management Support and Development Incorporated, and they run the remainder. And so we will know very shortly um, whether those providers are requesting renewal. I have some reason to believe um, Potentially that um, management support and development incorporated may want to talk to us and may not be interested um, Or maybe and so I don't have official word on that either way the contracts expire and will be rebid even though it's a service given the dollar value we have traditionally bid those out and we can do that in our normal course and I think the the real follow-up concern is have we do we need to put more money into next year's budget to cover the types of increases that ECVC is asking for? And the answer is yes, and we have. If there aren't any other questions on that, the second thing I wanted to talk about is somewhat related to your budget, um, but not directly, and that's the Sheriff's Office patrol space. I was hoping on Monday evening to have had an answer for you on Sheriff's Office patrol space. I do have a recommendation for you this morning. Um, and I'd like the board, if we could, to act on it, um, if the board is so inclined to do so. Um, we have, um, through Tim Corley's leadership and in cooperation with the Sheriff's Office, we have looked at a lot of different places to find um, the appropriate square footage configuration and price. Um, through some, uh, um, I'm going to uh, 
pat Tim Corley on the back for some great negotiating efforts. He has been able to bring the sheriff's first choice location to a price that we can afford. Um, and so what I'm asking the board this morning is to give me authority to um, sign a letter of intent and ultimately a lease to lease space, which is currently located at 3001 Stantonsburg Road in Greenville. Mm -hmm. It was formerly occupied by Viden. It's owned by um, RHD Property Management, LLC. Um, the sheriff um, likes that space, and the, um, we were able to negotiate down the base rent contingent upon an annual um, payment rather than monthly. And so the monthly rent we were able to reduce from 7400 per month down to 6600 per month um, but for 7200 square feet of space, which is more than what she currently has in her current space. We will have to pay some additional common area maintenance tax and insurance expenses not to exceed 5% of that cost. Um, and to take advantage of this discount by paying it annually, um, the finance office uh, will work with me to um, effectuate a transfer from two lapsed salaries and positions that are not filled this current year to cover this cost and have that paid for in advance so it will not have an impact on your proposed budget for next year. I think it's a real win-win. Um, I spoke to the sheriff this morning at 8 o'clock um, about this recommendation. She is thrilled with it. Um, I'm really pleased with what we've been able to do with the money, and I'm um, pleased with Brian's um, creative ability to find a way um, to take existing revenues and get this cost covered moving forward. So if the board is agreeable to that, I would like a motion that would authorize me to sign the letter of intent, enter into the lease, and um, effectuate the budget amendment process so that we can have this space um, uh, as soon as possible. So second, because I was really worried about the church situation. I really was. Yes, the Duffus building. And can you, can you just describe exactly where this is, this 3001 yes. Stanford? Yes. So it's, um, for those who have been here a long time, it used to be the Duffus and Associates Law Office. Then Viden occupied it for a number of years. It is, if you come in off of 264 into Greenville, you'll see the new Walmart, it's not so new anymore, and a Speedway gas station. And then there are two small offices um, right there before you get to the Zaxby's on your left. Okay. Um, and she would occupy, they're kind of twin buildings and she would occupy um, one of those twin buildings. Thanks. I think it's a, I think it's a good win-win. It's, win -win. mm -hmm. it's been moved in properly second. Is that vote no? Vote no, The sheriff's office got new building. And then the last Thank you. Do you need to say it past your name? So that motion passed. passed. Motion passes. Thank you. And then the last thing that I had, I will turn, which is a good news item, I'll turn over to um, Brian Barnett for just a, sh a um, short good news item. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Board. Uh, as part of the manager's recommended budget, you all saw Monday night that we like to value our employees. And we thought it was very fitting. We had some really good news this week um, as it relates to budget. And I wanted to take a little bit of, I guess, budget creator privilege to recognize one of our employees. Um, and it makes me so happy to embarrass her in this meeting today. But um, our budget and grants analyst, uh, Kelly Dixon, received word yesterday that she received the North Carolina Local Government Budget Association certification. She's now a certified budget officer. Um, it's a title and honor that myself and our budget administrator, Denise Irvin, both carry. So we understand both the difficulties um, of trying to get the certification and um, uh, the joke amongst us budget nerds is um, capital budgeting is one of the roughest things you have to learn and I believe she passed it um, with flying colors. So well, I just wanted to take a few seconds, I know we're running uh, a little ahead to recognize um, Kelly for her effort uh, in getting her certification. Bravo. 
All right, and then um, we, that's all that I have for your follow-up this morning. We're ready for Dr. Rouse, and if you want to take a short break, we can, uh, is he on his way? Somebody call we've him. Contact, we've contacted him. Okay. Kimberly's doing that now. Okay. Let's go ahead and take our break, and then as soon as he gets here, we can come finish. Somebody heard me on that side. I'm getting some things in there. But yeah, I wasn't trying to, but I'm trying to understand what you said. So I want to go outside right then. I'm going to go for it. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Rouse. We're ready when you are. I'm glad you got here. Yes, uh, <laughs> the red light cameras might show something that. Oh. <laughs> Y'all get right on that, somebody. <laughs> I agree. So, uh, no problem with those this morning. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for allowing me to come before you uh, to talk a little bit about our budget request. But uh, one of the things I wanted to do this morning is really kind of give you a little update on Pitt Community College. Uh, but uh, your finance person told me, so every minute I go over five minutes, they're going to deduct money, so <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> if I should continue. But thank you for having me this morning. Uh, let's see if I can get oriented here. So first of all, I just want to thank you again for your support uh, with the Center for Student Advancement, the Eddie and Joe Allison Smith Center. It's coming along very well. We're about... 35% complete on that. We're looking still to uh, finish this up in January of 23. Uh, we've talked with the contractors. It appears that everything is, is on schedule. We were afraid that we might have some issues with supply uh, chains, but they have done a wonderful job of getting supplies in early and storing it on site. So we hope to invite you to a ribbon cutting in January of this facility, but allowing us to use some of our uh, fund balance certainly has helped us with this. Uh, one of the things that we have started doing is engaging our adult learners in the community. We know that we're seeing a, a decline in our high school population as they graduate. So we decided what we want to do is re-engage uh, adult learners age 25 to 44. So we started an adult learner center. Uh, this has been partially funded by the NC State Belk Center uh, through the John M. Belk Endowment. Uh, back in the fall, you may have remembered, we did the Better Skills, Better Jobs Fair, which is one of the largest ones in eastern North Carolina. And the reason is bringing those adult learners back into the workforce and, and deciding if they could get some additional training. Uh, we certainly look at workforce development as one of the key priorities that we have for these adult learners. Also, we give resources for our adult learners that are not normally given to college students things like making sure that they have adequate food, uh, make sure they have adequate transportation, as well as housing. So it's more of a way of supporting these learners while they're in college, and we use our community resources for that. Uh, we also, as those of you who attended our presentation on campus, we have the reentry program. It's going along very well. We're trying to advocate for those individuals who have been just as involved may have been incarcerated, they're back in our community. How can we get them back into uh, the community to be productive citizens, to have good jobs, and to be taxpayers? So we are very excited about this program. It's moving along very well. Since August, when we launched, we've had 179 individuals to be served by this program so far. So as you know, last year you approved the Bulldog Promise, which is helping our high school students to have two years of community college if they meet certain criteria. We think this uh, is a great program and thank you for funding it. And I know you funded under workforce development, which is the right place because it is part of our workforce development pipeline. Uh, we also have the Technical Academy in which we're working very closely with Superintendent Linker to bring our students on campus for these various technical programs of heating, ventilation, air conditioning, electrical, industrial machinery and so forth. So we're delighted to have that. We look forward to continuing to grow that program. Right now we have about 80 students 
but our goal is to do about 200 students, again, supplying the workforce that's needed in Pitt County. We also offer a few what we call short-term um, workforce training. We know that not everybody is going to come to Pitt to do a two-year associate degree. So we have developed certain certificate programs in which they can go to work after completing four to five weeks of training. One is the BioWorks because we have, of course, the biopharma uh, job market out there. We have advanced manufacturing certificate as well as the commercial driver's license, which is very needed in the, in the job market now. And we also have uh, put together mobile classroom. We have four mobile classrooms that will be online starting this spring where we can actually take the training out into the community, to the job site, even to the public schools, to show students what they can do uh, in the workforce. So our facility needs the new welding buildings. I have to thank you for uh, being very positive about funding this. We will have the concept available in the next week about this as far as square footage and everything. And we'll certainly share it back with the county commissioners as to you know how that will look uh, we're also working for the Center for Workforce Development and Innovation uh, we're looking forward to at least getting a design on that and the concept coming up pretty soon with that particular facility we're looking at additional funding from outside uh, from various places including the legislature we're going to go to them for some additional funding grants money and so forth so but I appreciate your support with that so legislatively, we have met with you. Thank you for being on our campus. Uh, we had a wonderful time there, and I know that you, after seeing some things, you took immediate action, and we really appreciate that. And thank to the commissioners for that who all attended. Uh, we're also working with our local, regional, state um, governments to say, here's some things here at Pitt Community College that we'd like for you to see and for you to come and to work with us and to join us in making sure that we develop the workforce that's needed. So April was uh, National Community College Month. Again, thank you for your proclamation. Uh, once we did the proclamation, the town of Winterville said, hey, if they're going to do it from the county, we want to also do one. So we went the next Monday and got a proclamation from them as well. Uh, we held the town, excuse me, we did social media highlights, so we talked about Community College Month through our social media. We also held a town hall in which we talked about that, uh, the, the importance of community colleges um, on April 14th. And of course, you may have seen the article in the um, Daily Reflector in which I wrote about the importance of community college and training. We also last year had a company called NZ to do a statewide economic impact study of community colleges. They found that community colleges have a $19 billion annual impact on the North Carolina economy. That's statewide. So you might want to say, well, what does Pitt do for Pitt County? Glad you asked. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, there it is. So in Pitt County, looking at if you add our operational spending, our student spending, and alumni that have graduated from us, we impact the economy here to the tune of $228 million. So that's what comes back from your investment into Pitt Community College. So uh, in looking at this a different way, uh, one out of every 25 jobs in Pitt County is supported by the activities of PCC and our students. Uh, 27, um, excuse me, 2,548 jobs are supported by our alumni. <coughs> operations this is when we do an annual payroll and other spending uh, 57.8 million and that's enough to buy 1723 cars if they were available on the lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then student impact students who come to Pitt Community College a lot of them come from out of the county as well they have a 10.8 billion dollar impact on the local economy or 311 jobs are supported through their impact so after COVID, what have we learned we've learned to be more flexible in our offering to students we've learned that a lot of our students are struggling with day-to-day -day living day-to-day barriers to uh, getting to college 
So we've adjusted to make sure that we have flexibility at Pitt Community College while still having academic integrity. And looking towards the future, we're looking at how can we better serve those students. The, the pandemic brought out a lot of weaknesses that we saw. So we're working on making those weaknesses stronger. And here it is, our budget request. So uh, our approved operating budget for 21-22 was $6,253,326. We're asking for salary increase funds of 119,109. And again, a lot of this will go towards those who are making less than the minimum wage. We had to move it up to $13 an hour, but as of Jan excuse me, July, we're going to move it up to $15 an hour. So this will help to cover that minimum wage. We, we just cannot, uh, in good faith, have, have our employees who are making less than minimum wage. So this will at least bring up those that are making less to at least that level. Uh, we're also asking for a half a year of operations. Once we cut the ribbon on the uh, Student Advancement Center, we will need the operation funds for that. That's the water, light, gas, everything that goes to operate that particular building. That's $61,750. So our addition is $180,859. Uh, so our total operation budget is $6,000,000. $434,185, and we're asking for our normal uh, capital outlay, which we get each year in the $100,000 uh, range. So that brings our total request to $6,534,185. So with that, that's our request to the county commissioners to support Pitt Community College. Thank you very Any much questions? for the presentation. Yes. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, Pitt Community College, Dr. Rouse and his entire team have been such a pleasure to work with during this process. And as the board will recall, um, the recommended budget fully funds this request in total. Thank you. That's all I'm, we need you. to know. I'm happy to hear you say that you are raising your employee salary to $15 an hour. Yes. That was that below. So. Yeah, we feel that in uh, good conscience, we're, we're training and educating individuals to go out and have a good living wage. Right. So we want our employees at least to, to at least meet the minimum, if not a little bit above that. So we we'll appreciate that. I applaud that. that. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any further discussion, questions, directives um, that anybody would like to address before we recess for tomorrow? Um, I do have a concern. I know um, as we talk about budget, uh, this is not a budget uh, item, but when, uh, when they come before us, it brings on uh, other questions. And then when you read in the newspaper, you, you, that helps to bring on these other questions. Um, and I read in the newspaper several days ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, that there was an increase in suspension uh, in our school system. Uh, so I was wondering if um, if we could get uh, the number of suspensions per school and find out what the superintendent is um, working on to um, to address that. I can certainly get that information for you and bring that back for you. I will say um, that I know there are have been some conversations about suspensions because when Sam Croom, Kelly Andrews, and I visited um, the Bethel Youth Center in uh, Bethel and mm -hmm. met with Dr. Gary Moore, he was in conversation with, he shared that he was in <coughs> conversation with Dr. Lenker about different options on how his um, youth center could assist mm -hmm. children who were in suspension status mm -hmm. and so I believe there is some um, ongoing conversation about suspensions I'm sure I can get you those numbers and um, share them back with the board it's the elementary ones that I was concerned about I'm sorry it was the elementary one that I was concerned about that okay I especially about. elementary school suspensions okay 
yes, I believe that um, we should be able to get that information for you since it doesn't directly impact your budget numbers. No, no. I won't make it an urgent request to have back by tomorrow right. if that's okay with the board, mm -hmm. but I will get mm -hmm. that information mm -hmm. and share it either at your next meeting or I'll put it in your weekly packet. Okay, that, that'll be fine. Okay. Any additional questions or concerns? Uh, if not, we'll stand in recess till tomorrow morning at 8.30. I think we've beaten you after that.